in Tahir Square last Tuesday, as on many other occasions, when Muslims went down to pray, they were protected by Egypt's Christians. Tomorrow, I just received this message from my friends in Tahir Square right now. They have decided that tomorrow will be a day for the martyrs and that a mass, a Christian mass, will be said in Tahir Square and the Christians will be protected by the Muslims. So my message to David Cameron today is this. Don't lecture us about British values. I'm interested in Egyptian values. I'm interested in the values of the Egyptian revolution. It's no mistake, you know, that speech is made by Cameron today. Perhaps no mistake, it's made in all places in Munich today. Because the BBC rants this morning about the threat of the Muslim Brotherhood taking over in Egypt and at the same time the Prime Minister of Britain is ranting in Munich about the threat from the enemy within. Now let's be absolutely clear. What every Muslim I talked to said in Egypt, what every Christian I said to talked in Egypt, what every socialist I talked to said in Egypt, what every trade unionist I talked to in Egypt said, this is a people's revolution against the plutocrats, the murderers, the torturers, the globalizers, the corporations. That's the revolution in Egypt. What incredibly brave people they are. What incredibly brave people they are. Organized so brilliantly. When I went into the square, as Tarek said, there was, co there was cooperation between the army, at least some of the rank and file soldiers. The rank and file soldier, the squad, he asked to see my identity. I showed him my passport. He then passed me over to a woman in a full burqa who searched my bag, apologized, and said it's for our own safety. Now, I recommend this policy to the British Airports Authority. I would feel safer if instead of searching women in burkas, they allowed women in burkas to do the searching. That would be a value worth having in Britain today. And we all know what the link is between this and war. Because just imagine this for a moment. Just conduct now in your own mind this small thought experiment. What if there had been no war in Iraq? What if there had been no million dead, no occupation? What would now, after Tunis, after Cairo, after Egypt, what would the headline that we would be reading say? I think it would say this. Saddam Hussein's regime shaken to its foundations by mass demonstrations in Baghdad. That's what it would be reading. And that is the way that we would be dealing with all the Arab dictators. It is people power. It is the power of revolution. It is the power of self-organization, which is the only way that it is worth getting rid of dictators. Now, the Egyptian revolution as we speak is on a knife edge. We've seen it this week, the beauty of the revolution occupying Tahir Square, the ugliness, the depravity, the brutality of those mobs of plainclothes policemen, of hired folks trying to drive the revolutionaries off the square. And then that fantastically brave response as they pushed them all the way down Tahir Square and out the exit by the Egyptian museum. And then yesterday, the masses returning and holding the square. Today, as we meet here, they're arguing with the army officers. A senior army general has just spoken from the platform in Tahir Square and said, I'm worried, I'm worried you're being manipulated. But the people there are chanting, 
we won't go until he goes. We won't go until he goes. The soul, the heart, the existence of the Egyptian revolution is at stake. And every last thing that we can do, every last protest, every last meeting, every last letter, every last message, you must do it. Because this revolution is a profound revolution. It can alter the whole imperial architecture of the Middle East. It can deal at one moment the single biggest blow that could be delivered to Islamophobia. It can give a beacon of hope to working people and poor people the globe over. So today, recommit yourselves. Every last piece of energy, imagination, initiative, activity, everything for the Egyptian revolution.